Today, I have a car that I've been waiting to review for quite some time now, and it's a brand new Ford Mustang Mach-E premium trim with the extended range battery. The exterior is star white metallic and the interior is the space gray leatherette material, which actually looks really nice. And when you first get inside this car, if you go with the space gray, I'm sure the black also looks good as well, but the space gray just adds another level of futurism to the car. And on this premium trim, you get these 19 inch wheels that come with very narrow tires. And we're gonna talk about those narrow tires in just a minute because it does definitely change the driving dynamics. But yeah, let's start out with the interior here. I don't know about you guys, or if you've been inside of a Mustang Mach-E or mini Ford vehicles, I haven't been in a ton of Fords. And I'll tell you that this is the best interior I have seen from Ford personally. Everything in here is soft touch for the most part. There's a lot of leatherette stitching everywhere. So I think Ford really put their best foot forward in terms of their interior materials and the cabin in the Mach-E. So I'm pretty pleased with what I have going on here right now. And of course, if you know me and you watch any of my other reviews, the one thing I really don't like inside of car interiors is gloss black. And the Mach-E thankfully doesn't have a ton, just a tiny amount here around the center console, but that's about it. So that's an A plus for me, Ford. Of course, we can't talk about the interior without talking about the 15.5 inch beautiful touchscreen display here that unlike other cars, let's say the Model Y, for example, doesn't control absolutely everything, but it certainly controls most of what's going on here in the Mach-E. And generally speaking, I've been pretty happy with the performance here of the 15.5 inch touchscreen. It's not quite as tablet-like as the Model Y, but certainly an improvement over the ID4. And there's a lot of functionality to it that's built in. You can also use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which will make a lot of people happy. There are only two things about this center display I don't really like. The first one is the little dial here that Ford was trying to be maybe perhaps a little cute with. I understand they wanna blend in sort of the traditional technology along with some of the new and upcoming going all to touch stuff. But I do think this does limit Ford in the future on what they can do with the bottom of the screen here. Because Ford decide to go with a vertical display here, it pushes a lot of the controls that you're gonna to wanna to use, including the climate, seat heaters, the defrosters, all of that kind of stuff, it's all at the very bottom of the screen. So if I'm driving down the road here, and let's say it's a cold winter day, I'm going down the road, it's not hot enough in the cabin, I'm literally taking my eyes off the road and looking down and, and touching things down here. And I think that's a lot less safe than had this screen been flipped to a horizontal orientation and then putting the climate controls and things like that over here on the left side so it's very accessible to the driver. Of course, over here behind the steering wheel, you have another 10 inch digital display cluster and it's pretty beautiful. There's a lot of clarity to the text. It looks like it's high quality. It's great to have your range displayed there, clear and center. You have not only your estimated mileage in terms of range, but you also have your battery that's left over currently. The one thing I definitely recommend you do if you're gonna buy one of these is to go for the BNO 10 speaker sound system, which sounds incredible. I would say the only other system that I've set in in terms of an electric vehicle that sounds close is probably the Tesla Model Y or the Tesla Model 3. So let's talk a little bit about the seats in the Mach-E. I will start off by saying that if you watch my other videos, you know that I believe Tesla has the best seats in the automotive industry right now, at least for common cars. And I think the Mach-E is going to fit somewhere towards the middle of the pack. I'm not saying these seats are uncomfortable. I'm just saying that the Model Y, in my opinion, has the best seats. The ID4 that I own and drive nearly every day has really comfortable seats, but not quite as good as the Model Y. And I'd put the Mustang Mach-E, because of the stitching and things like that, just below the ID4 seats. Again, not uncomfortable, not something that would deter me from buying it, but certainly my preference would be just a little bit more plushness and support, less stitching. I can just tell you going down the road here, roughly 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, you get quite a bit of road noise, especially for how narrow these tires actually are. And as you go, let's say closer to 60 miles an hour, you do start to pick up some of that wind noise, hearing the cars behind you wish by, things like that. So I would say the cabin noise is acceptable, but it's not gonna be class leading in any way. 
And now it's time for my favorite part of the video, which is I get to test out the torque from the electric motors in this car. So keep in mind, this is a rear wheel drive extended range battery Mach-E. The zero to 60 time is estimated at six seconds, which is slightly quicker than my ID4, but of course nowhere near as quick as the Model Y that I drove. But let's put the pedal down and see how we do here. Okay. Yeah, it feels good. Certainly no slouch. I don't think you're gonna complain a ton about it being slow. It kind of fits right there in the middle between the ID4 and the Model Y. If you are unaware, the Mach-E has 225 tires on all four wheels. Now that's quite a bit smaller than the 255s that you get with the base long range all wheel drive Model Y. And it's different than the 255s in the back and the 235s I have in the front on my ID4 first edition at home. So the one thing you'll definitely notice driving down the road in a rear wheel drive Mustang Mach-E is that if you turn the wheel at all, the back end and the front end tires do not feel like they're going anywhere near the same direction. It's like, it's like sort of a diagonal every time you move. It kind of makes you lack confidence in that the car is going to be able to handle tight turns or tight curves. And again, I wish they had put wider wheels on the Mach-E that were a little bit more appropriate for its size. I would say the Mach-E drives much more like the Audi e-tron I had a few weeks ago versus a Model Y or an ID4. So the Mach-E feels like it should be a much larger SUV than it actually is. And that's all due to the handling and driving characteristics. I will note that the GT trim comes with wider tires. And so that might be the way to go if you find the handling characteristics of the Mach-E not to your liking. But even with that, one thing I will add as a positive note for Ford is they gave the Mach-E true one pedal driving which if you're unfamiliar is when you take your foot off the accelerator, the car will come to a complete stop using regenerative braking all on its own, and it will hold you at a stop until you push on the accelerator again. But if you look at companies like VW, who own Porsche and Audi and all sorts of brands, their EV platform currently does not allow for one pedal driving. So a thumbs up for Ford for doing one pedal driving correctly in the Mach-E. This is just like in the Model Y, feels relatively similar. I would say the region on, on the Mach-E is pretty strong, but it doesn't overwhelm you. So I think that most people are gonna find that this mode is the way to drive for comfort. Okay, and in terms of visibility here, out the front, you can see pretty much everything. The A-pillars are relatively thin, nothing special there. The view isn't quite IMAX-like as you get with the Model Y, but I would say it's very comparable to the ID4. You do sit a little bit lower than you do in the ID4, so it, it's more of a, a hatchback type feel than it is an SUV type feel. The side view mirrors do come with blind spot monitoring, of course, which I think should be standard on every single vehicle coming out these days. So that's helpful, but they are relatively small. They're certainly smaller than my ID4 mirrors. I would say they're probably about the same as the Model Y. Of course, I will measure it when I get home and I will add that to my review video so you can see all three side by side if that's something that's really important to you. Visibility out of the back is also really good. Definitely better than the Model Y probably on par with the ID4, if not a little bit better than the ID4. The one thing I will say about driving the Mach-E is that Ford decided to put a pretty big snout or front hood on this car. I assume they did that so they can push some of the electronics and things out a little bit, but also add a front trunk that's actually usable in size. The front end is, is definitely longer than say the ID4, which kind of just drops off. And even the Model Y, it also just sort of drops off. So of course the Mach-E comes with all sorts of safety features, which I'll go into in my full review, but things like a 360 camera are really nice. The backup camera is nice and clear. Again, the blind spot monitoring's nice. There's collision warnings. You have these sensors on here telling you whether or not you're staying in the lanes. So even this premium Mach-E that's not even the top of the line, there are gonna be a lot of boxes that are checked for most buyers. Ford steering wheel on the Mach-E feels a little bit different than some of the other competitors. It has like a plushness to it, sort of like a cushion or something. What they really did well here though, is there's not a ton of crazy physical buttons everywhere. You have the blue cruise buttons here on the left side of the steering wheel. And then you have your volume, your voice activated stuff and skipping the tracks over here on the right. And that's it. And I think that that is a really good balance between 
for people who are coming from a traditional car that want to have the traditional controls and looking forward to the future and knowing that physical buttons are probably not going to be the thing in 2025 or something like that. The suspension of the Mach-E kind of fits in between the ID4 and the Model Y. The Model Y has a very tight and some would say harsh ride where you feel every bump. I mentioned in that review video that it feels a lot like a hatchback. The ID4 feels more like a traditional SUV. It's relatively cushy. You kind of feel like you're driving on uh, really good dampers that are soaking up all of the bumps for you. And with that, you know, you get more body roll and it's not quite as a direct, you know, you're gonna take that to the canyons and, and just carve them up because you're so planted to the ground. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.